All right, good morning. We are going to uh, do a little shift here when praying this, this past week, and uh, God said that He wanted to rearrange uh, this sermon series a little bit. And so, and today, uh, what was going to be the last week is now going to be today. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it's going to be kind of interesting why God would do such a thing because uh, the subject of, of what we're looking at is in Matthew chapter 5. Jesus is talking to the people and he's talking about a subject and they call it the Beatitudes. It's about our behaviors of being Christians. Okay, and the last subject of what he talked about is called persecution. Okay, I think why God wanted to hit this while it was still hot on the fires because I don't know, maybe you as kids, you don't really realize this. But again, th there's already been one church in South Carolina that people were going to church. A guy came into church and he shot the people in the church. Well, now there's a in Texas this past week, a guy came in there and he shot everybody in the church. Everybody got hit. But there was 26 dead Okay, just they were going to church to hear about Jesus. Now, the thing about it is a lot of times in churches today is that preachers and people think that the preachers should preach a certain way and have a certain thing. But I think what they're doing is that they're hurting you as parents, you as grandparents and you as children, because you're not hearing the truth of what it may cost you to follow Jesus. That one day, something might happen to you because you follow Jesus and you are saying, I'm a Christian. But here's the issue. A Christian nowadays is really mm, not really a Christian. It's just a name. But we'll get into that here in a few minutes. But what we want to look at is we started this thought of last week. OK, and we're going to kind of use this thought to get us through this series. OK, and this thought is is uh taking me one second here i gotta fix my phone okay it, it is it is wanting to shut off on me and so give me a second here because this is my remote control uh for the for the powerpoint there all right all right here we go here we go we're up and we are running all right we're looking at the thought of we are not just a Christian home. We are a Christ centered home. Now, the thought of that, when you look at those words, you're saying, well, that don't make no sense to me. Can it make it a little bit understandable? OK, here's where it is. A lot of people, if you take a poll, especially around here, OK, in Kannapolis, you go up there and you'll say, what are you? Are you a, what kind of religion are you? And they'll think back, well, my, my mom and dad or my grandma, they went to a Baptist church, so I'm a Christian. So what they're saying is just because somebody else in their family went to church, they're calling themselves a Christian. So it's like 80% of that. So it's like if I take a poll, I go outside there and ask 10 people what their religion is, eight of them say, I'm a Christian. And two of them say, well, I'm an either I'm either a different kind of a follower of a different religion or I don't believe in God at all. And so it's the idea of saying, you know what, we as followers of Jesus Christ, we want to be different because why? Here's what here's what the whole subject is. OK. They say they're a Christian, but they live like everybody else who's not a Christian. OK. And that means what they're doing is they're sinning against God just like everybody else is sinning against God. They're lying, they're stealing, they're cussing, they're, do, they're having doing, doing uh, uh, relationships with others against God. They're, they're just being, everything is it's a sin against God, but they're calling themselves a Christian. And so in that, we want to think, I want to make you think about it as, as Christians. What do we got to do to say, you know what? I'm not like everybody else. And what's going to happen when you make that stand? When you go to church every Sunday and people make fun of you for going to church or you sit back and every day you find time to read your Bible at night or in the morning or maybe at lunch. You know, for a lot of students nowadays, it's easy because everybody carries a phone. You know, so you can get uh, you you can get a couple apps there. That's the U version, 
um, or you can get the Bible Gateway Bible app and you can read the Bible anywhere when you got it on a phone. But for some of you, you don't have that luxury and some of you don't. You, you can just you'll have to carry the Bible. I mean, how much may of you as a student would carry your Bible to, to school in your backpack and at lunchtime you would sit down there and you would read some stories in the Bible while you was eating lunch? That what would happen to you that kids would might make fun of you? And I think in churches today, we don't talk about that. We want to protect you and think that that's not going to happen to you. Maybe the thing about it is it won't happen to you because don't just don't take your Bible then. Don't read your Bible at school and it won't happen to you. So I think God had this thought today to hit while it's, it's, it's really hot. Is that for us to think as a people, you know what? The move of this nation is moving towards a revival. You know what's going to move it towards a revival? The shooting in Texas. There's a revival kicking off right now down there. That there is a move of God happening because people that want to follow Jesus are getting hurt because of it. And people are saying, whoa, that's weird, Pastor. That's really, really weird. Well, we're going to talk about how really weird it is that you're going to have to make a choice sooner or later. And for you as kids and for moms and dads it's not, and teenagers and young adults, it's for right now to say, I'm going to make a choice right here, right now. I'm going to put a line in the sand and I'm going to say, you know what? No matter what happens, good or bad, I'm following Jesus and I'm going to be different that means some things in your life you're going to have to stop doing and maybe we'll talk about that here in a little bit some things that are against god and it, and people are going to look at you and they're going to say you're weird you don't say no bad words you're just absolutely weird and you're going to get made fun of that's persecution but wait till you find out later in the story here that some Christians, really bad stuff happened. Ooh, we're going to find out here in a little bit. It's to really ask you yourself your, as a Christian, what are your values in, in, in being a follower of Jesus Christ? Parents, grandparents, what is it the values of being a Christian you want to put down into your children? For when they grow up in this world, America is changing. It's starting to be like all the other countries. To be a Christian, you're going to call you're going to you're going to have troubles come your way. And are you ready for it? I think this message here is just to really put a mindset to sit down and think you you're going to have to sit down and have a talk with your family, with your children, with your grandchildren about what happens if Somebody comes to hurt you because you love Jesus and you want to follow him. What are you going to do? Where are your values in that? So to today we're going to look at this, this, this key thought today. As if, if you are a Christ-centered family, you will be persecuted. Again, the understanding of the word persecution is that means bad stuff people are going to do to you. They're going to say bad things about you. They're going to call you names. They may even hurt you. They may even beat you up. They may be even try to kill you. That's what persecution means. To be a family that follows Jesus Christ, it's going to come your way. You will be persecuted because the bible never says in there when you become a christian all things are going to be all good or good candies and lollipops no 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 it's not going to be like that it doesn't say that in the bible it's like whoa i got saved going to church and everything everybody else is happy for you it's not necessarily true it's really just not exactly going to happen that way and matthew Let's read that. Let's read about it, what Jesus says about this. Matthew chapter 5, verses 5 and through 12. I mean, chapter 5, verses 10 through 12. This is what it reads. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when... 
people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. That's Jesus talking. Okay? Rejoice and be glad because great is your reward in heaven. Now get what Jesus is saying here. Jesus is saying, I'm not going to hide anything under it. When you come to have a relationship with me, Jesus, this is what's going to happen. Okay? They're going to insult you. They're going to call you names. Not like, you know, fatty or long, you know, four eyes or nothing like that. They're going to call you names that are really going to hurt your feelings. And it's for you to know that this is coming. And for you to prepare your heart to follow Jesus, that people are going to purposely call you kids in school, kids in college. Uh, you know, they're going to call you names, insult you, because you want to follow Jesus Christ. Then they're going to... They're going to persecute you they're going to try to do things to hurt you antagonize you make you make a bad choice they might go like you know i mean think about jesus they spit on him and kicked him and, and put a, a a thing over his head and we're hitting him like tell me who hit you tell me who hit you they might do the same thing to you They will do all kinds of things because of what? Because of Jesus. All this might happen to you. you. Know what? All this will happen to you because you're going to be different. And they're going to do it to you because you're different because of Jesus. You are putting Jesus in a part of your life that because he died on the cross and saved you from your sins, you won't go to hell. You're going to go to heaven. And because of that, people are going to get whacked out of shape about it and do things against you. Well, you know, you're just saying that because it's going to happen to you because you're a preacher. Mm -mm. Yeah, it's going to happen to me because I'm a preacher, but it's going to happen to you too. It doesn't happen just to preachers. It doesn't happen just to missionaries. It doesn't just happen to, to Sunday school teachers. It happens to those who follow Jesus Christ, those that follow God. Here's my proof. There's a story in the very book of the, uh, the, at the very beginning of the book of the Bible. It's about two brothers. It's called Cain and Abel, and here's what happens. Okay, God laid down some rules, okay, some little ground rules. This is what you're going to do to follow me, okay? Follow, make me your God. This is what you got to do. You got to take a lamb, okay, and you got to cut the lamb's throat, and then you got to do these certain things with the lamb, okay, to be a sacrifice to ask forgiveness of your sins. This is before Jesus. Because later, Jesus dies, and his blood is the, one, the way to ask the forgiveness of your sins. But before Jesus, this is the way you do it. Okay, this is the rules. This is the way you do it to ask for forgiveness of your sins. You kill the lamb, you use the blood, you, you do this sacrifice, you do these certain things, and you do that, and I accept you and that I forgive you. Well, the one brother, Cain, he says, he's going to be a little bit different. I'm not doing it the way God does it. I'm just going to go out here and get me some corn, and I'm going to get me some tomatoes, and I'm going to give me some, some cucumbers, and I'm going to make this nice little sacrifice here, and I'm going to give it to God as my sacrifice. And God turned around and said, Cain, are you kidding me? That's not the way I want it done. I'm not accepting his sacrifice. And because of that, he was not doing it God's way. Cain got mad at Abel. Why? Because it, why did he get mad at Abel? Because Abel did it right. You know why people are going to get mad at you? Because you're going to do it right. You're going to follow Jesus Christ and what he's teaching here about how to be good, how to treat people, how to forgive, how to love, how to do the things Jesus did. And people are going to get mad at you for doing it right. And you know what Cain did? He killed his brother. Not because he did it. He was bad or he he was mad at his brother. He was mad and he got angry. And when you get angry, you do stupid things. And because he did so, he was angry. He turned around and he killed his brother. Because his brother did it right. 
His, God, his brother says, I want to follow God with all my heart. I'm going to do whatever God tells me to do. I'm going to do it this way. And that is the first really scene of persecution in the, in the Bible of a story. It wasn't a good friend. It wasn't a best friend. It wasn't a stranger. It was brothers. And we're going to talk about that in a little while here. That in, even in other countries... If somebody in another country and you get saved and you get make Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, their daddy will put out a hit. He'll pay somebody some money to come after their, 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 their kid who got saved to kill him. What? That's crazy. But it's the truth. It's happening all over in the Middle East every day. We've got it made right here in, 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 in the USA, in Kannapolis, North Carolina, that uh, if we go to school, somebody's just going to make fun of us, you know, and make, call us a name or something like that. Wow. This is, this is just crazy. But, you know, what if, they, what if you just say, that you know what, I'm going to put a mark in the sand, and I'm going to be different. As an adult, a young adult, maybe there's certain things that you're in a position of life right now that you're, you're dating or you're with somebody, and it's like, you know what, I'm going to put a mark in the sand. You know what, God says sex before marriage is called fornication. It's a sin against God. I'm going to say, Psh, there's no more sex until we get married. Whoa, what's going to happen? One or two things. He's going to say, I'll see you later, or he's going to say, Let's get married. The law of God says fornication is a sin. Sex outside of marriage is a sin. He said it. I didn't say it. You know what? But there's good people all over this, this, this United States, good people, and they're living in sin. It's not me that's judging. It's God's word that brings the judge. They're lying. They're doing business un, un, unethical. They're stealing. They're, 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 uh, they're hurting. They're hating. They're, they're doing things like that. And then, and then the one that does, it's not preached about anywhere in, in all of all America is relationships. And that's being passed down to our children of saying, you can live like this. It's okay. You know why? Because it, it, it's crazy. That even this is how Christians think. Because I had a really weird conversation about it. The conversation was like this. Is it okay to move in with this guy? Because you got to try the product out before you marry it. Because you know what? When you get in there and you find out he's a slob or she's a slob, and you know what it's like, uh, we're, we're going to break up now. We're having nothing like it. you got to try it out before you go get and commit your whole life to it. That is man's thinking and creating a God to suit yourself. That is not what God said. God said the act of sex before marriage is a sin. Boom. If you're married and you're, and you're having sex with somebody else, that's a sin. It's called adultery. It's the thought of saying you're going to be persecuted of saying, you know what? God's word from this point on, God's word says I'm going to do it this way. You might be finding yourself of another place to live. It's just what happens. How about just for, for, for some people or young adults that say, you know what, you like to go out to the movies with your friends all the time and do certain things like that. And you say, you know what, we're done with the rated R movies because you know for a fact when it says R, it's coming with a lot of bad language, using God's name in vain and the nudity and all that. We're done. I'm not going out to those no more. And they're going to like, what, are you crazy? You know what? No, I'm trying to clean up my, my eyes and my ears for God's sake to be used by God. And they're going to make fun of you. And you, your, your friends are just going to say, you, you're just a goody two-shoes anymore. You just don't, you, you, you're, who are you? I want the old this person back, you know? Gosh, we used to have so much fun all the time. But when you start putting uh, things God's way of getting rid of the evil or the things that are sin against God, people are going to start looking at you strange. You're weird. You're a, your family's weird. 
You know, what about those that, that raise their kids and say, you know what, you know, the, 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 we're, we're, our little Johnny's going out for football, you know, and he's going to do this thing like that. There, Well, my son, he's playing football too, but he ain't playing in that league. Why not? They have games on Sunday. We go to church on Sunday. We ain't doing that. You're going to mess up your five-year-old's whole life because you want, you want him to go to church? Are you crazy? He could make it to the NFL if he goes through this league. You know, and it's like, you know, people are going to absolutely give you such a hard time. So how do we prepare our families for persecution? This is a good question. How do we prepare ourselves? How do we prepare our children? How do we pre prepare our young adults? How do we prepare our families for being, you're going to get persecuted. You're going to get made fun of. You're going to get teased. You may get hit. You may get beat up. How do we prepare our families for that? And then this is a message that's like, you know, this is, we don't preach this kind of stuff in there. No way we want to hear this. I'm telling you from this, this thing that happened down here in Texas, I'd rather preach this and at least everybody hear it one time. And then it comes to you that it's not on me that you, weren't get, you didn't get a chance to get ready for you and your family for what's to come. Because we don't know that this this point, because we're in a location, we're in a really interesting location. It is nothing for somebody that's whacked to walk through this parking lot and just all of a sudden come through that door and do the same thing that they did in Texas and just start shooting. Because he wants to go over here and make some money illegally and the conviction of the words going through those walls over there and he can hear it. It's driving him insane because he's hearing about God and Jesus and that's a sin. And he says, I've had enough of that. Walks out there and comes out this door and everybody in here, me, you, everyone in here, is, it gets killed. It can happen. I don't want that to happen. But why would I want, want you to do, go through life and be tricked in your mind and your thinking that bad things don't happen to good people? Bad things don't happen to Christians. That's a lie. Then people were just in there Sunday morning just having church, praising the name of Jesus, and a guy comes in there and starts shooting. A little five-year-old gets killed. That's, that's what happened. So how do, we, how do we prepare our families for persecution? Well, first thing I think we ought to do is we need to look at, we need to expect it. We need to expect that we're going to get made fun of because we're following Jesus. We're going to get hit because we're following Jesus. We're going to get beat up because we're following Jesus. You need to expect it coming. If you're going to do things to do right by your God because he loved you and he sent his son to die for you and you're going to make him Lord of your life and you're going to say, you know what, I'm going to do this. I'm not going to cuss. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to drink. I'm not going to chew and I'm not going to follow people that do. I'm going to do what God is teaching me to do with all my heart, the best of my ability. And next thing you know, somebody's going to make fun of you. Somebody's going to hit you. Somebody's going to whack you in the side of the head. Somebody's going to call you names. They're going to call you crazy. 2 Timothy says this, 2 Timothy 3.12. In fact, everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. That's what the Bible says. You will be persecuted. You mean business with Jesus Christ, you're going you're gonna to run into some trouble at one point or another in, in your life, if not more. Everyone who follows Christ is going to run into some issues. It may be if in your, in your family. You may get this get together every year for Thanksgiving, and you're the only one that ever says, let's pray for the food before we eat. And everybody else around you just gives you a hard time. Ah, shut up. What do you got to do all that for? You know. And old grandma, she wants to keep the peace. She says, okay, let's do it, little Johnny ass. Okay. But everybody else is sitting there mumbling under their breath while you're saying the prayer and calling you names. Goody two shoes, your grandma's favorite. <laughs> or how, how, how about this one? When I was a kid, now I, I don't have nothing against trick or treating or anything like that. But when Halloween came around, when I was a kid, we were not allowed to dress up and go trick or treating. Because when you research, the origin of Halloween and what it really means, it, it will absolutely make you think that maybe I shouldn't do this because it is against God. 
I used to get so made fun of by my friends in the neighborhood because I never went with them. Well, one time I snuck out, but I didn't dress up. But I got me a bag, and I went with my friends, and we went trick-or-treating. My mom was like, where'd you get that candy? Uh, David. <laughs> well, it was with David, but, you know, David was dressed up, and we both snuck out, and we went with Joey and Jeff, and, you know, and we hung out on our bicycles, and we went house to house, and we went trick-or-treating. But I went against what my mom and dad wanted. Now, I can't tell you what happened because I disobeyed mom and dad because I don't remember. But all I know is when I grew up, mom and dad had set down a game, uh, rules that we did not do trick-or-treating or anything like that because that day celebrated the devil and the evil, and we just were, gonna not, we're just not going to be a part of that. We were going to be different. And I got made fun of when I was a kid. They used to give me a hard time about it. Now, I'm not saying this is for you, because a lot of you, all you see it as, I get to dress up, be somebody different, and I get to get some candy, a lot of candy. And that's all it's all about you. It's not about the evil ritual of what it really means. But I dare you. I dare you to research the real intent of Halloween. You might rethink that mm, we ain't going trick-or-treating no more. But you will be persecuted. John. Chapter 15, verses 18 through 20. If the world hates you, keep in mind that it hate, hated me too, first. If you belong to the world, it would love you as its own. As it is, you do not belong to the world, but I have chosen you out of the world. That is why the world hates you. Remember what I told you. A servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, Jesus, they will persecute you also. Do you get what this is saying here? Jesus is pretty much saying, look, you want to see a Christian that says that they're a Christian? They act different than the world. But you want to see a Christian that says that they are, they're a Christian but acts like everybody else? They're not really a Christian because they belong to the world. They're doing it like everybody else. The next thought I would like to put into our, 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 our idea is you need to endure it. Persecution, you need to endure it. 1 Corinthians 4.12 when we are cursed, we blessed. When we are persecuted, we endure it. So here's the thought, what Jesus is saying here. When we are cursed, when somebody's cursing you and saying bad things about you, you say, in the name of Jesus, I bless you. I speak good to you. And, and when people are doing bad to you, what is he saying? You endure it. You take it. What did Jesus do? When they were hitting him with, with their fists, did he say, put them up, put them up? Did Jesus do that back? No. Jesus said, he just bowed his head and, and he took it. He endured the pain. Why did he endure the pain? Because if he wouldn't have died, we would never have a way to go to heaven. So all he's doing is ask you to do what he's doing. And he's saying, take it, suck it up. <gasps> Take it like a man or take it like a woman. Take it like he did. Endure it. Don't be going off there, you know, and, and just whining and boohooing, you know, on Facebook. Woo-hoo, I love my friend. They just friended me because I keep putting all that scripture on there and they get whacked at me because all of a sudden God said, it was leading me to write, to put the scriptures down about that homosexual stuff because my friends, you know, they, 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 I saw all that stuff about all this homosexual stuff and so I wrote it just to let them know what God says and now they're defriended me. Oh, you know, like, you know, like, you know what? If that's what God's word says about homosexuality, that means a man and a man and a woman and a woman. God says that's a sin. It's wrong. Then you stand with God. And if your friend defriended you, you suck it up and say, well, they're missing out on God's blessings. They, they don't know what, they don't know what the, the blessings of God means of doing the right thing. You know, 
We don't understand what real persecution is in this, in this country. We really don't. Look, in one country, you follow Jesus, they take you to jail, and then they cut your tongue out. Another country, they take you to jail. There's this one preacher, he got, he got in trouble. He was in jail for three years, I think it was. Two, I know it was more than two years. And, and he almost died because they beat him almost every day. And, we were, and, and the whole country here in America was praying for him to get, for them to let him go. And even our government was trying to make negotiations to, to, for him to get set free. All because he was telling people about Jesus. And they put him in jail and beat him and beat him and beat him. Some of them in, in, in other countries over there, if, if, you find, if you're, their daddy finds out that you're a Christian, you're disowned. You can't come back to the family. You can't come back to any family meetings or any family get-togethers, no Christmas, no Easter, no nothing. You can't come back to the house or not. If you come back to the house, daddy will kill you himself. What? That's crazy. No, no, that's the truth. That's what happens over in some of these other countries. You ask Jesus to be your Lord and Savior and follow him, your own dad will kill you. He'll pay somebody to hunt you down if, if, if some of them are that bad. And even in some of those countries, you follow Jesus as your Lord and Savior, they cut your head off. You're like, oh my goodness, this is gory. You know what? Our kids watch gory stuff on TV all the time. Why not we tell them the truth here, here in, in, in church? For them to endure and to expect to endure what's going to come into their lifetime. For them to make the decisions right now at 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 years old. To turn around and say, you know what? No matter what happens, I'm following Jesus. Now's the time for them to make that decision. I ain't trying to play no games here. Because the truth is coming. You don't know what's coming your way for somebody to come in. You see, when you do these things and you're ready for that, it's amazing what God, what happens, that, in, it, that God does, God does something inside of you. When you're enduring persecution, you're spiritual, you're, root, you're rooted in it, you're grounded in it. You know why? Because here's how we know this, because I used to follow this, uh, this Japanese, what was it, uh, Chinese uh, this Chinese missionary, and she used to send me some stuff, and, 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 and she would send uh, um, little snippets of pictures of, of the, some of them being busted in a night church. They, were, they, had to, they had to go to church at night at 2 o'clock in the morning, and it, it wasn't the same place every week. It had to go to a different place every week. So because the police, if they found out about it, they came in, and, there, and a lot of people went to jail. A lot of them just got beat up, and they had pictures of them and stuff like that. That you know what, in that purpose right there alone, that they were telling me in the, in the news, it was saying like 10,000 people were getting saved in one week because of be, people getting beat up for Jesus. That's so weird. That's so crazy. But I almost see this coming to America to change America and the direction of it. And so it's like this for you to tell you, get ready for it. Are you ready? Are you ready for somebody to stand and hold you down in the ground saying, take it back. Take it back. Don't say Jesus is your Savior. Don't say you, you're saved and going to heaven. Take it back. And you say, I'm not taking it back. And then they start punching you in the face. Look, this started a long time ago when this girl in the high school, this kid come through and started shooting people and he turned around and he said to this girl, you, you believe in God? And she said, yes. And he shot her right in the head in a high school. Just because she said, I believe in God. I came across this this. This quote or this saying here and, and the principle of it, it really is just, a, it's, it's, it's really the truth. Here's what it says. It says, when family identity is strong, peer pressure is weak. When family identity is weak, peer pressure is strong. Here's what this means. 
If you can get in your family and in your children and you can get them to understand you were created for a purpose. You have a purpose. Even though you're five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years old, you have a purpose. And our purpose is we're going to follow God and he's going to teach us everything we know, need to know for our purpose. And with that purpose and then with that understanding, you, your identity is strong. And then that when people try to come to you and say, hey, man, we're going to go over here and we're going to do this. It's, it's, it's bad. And it's against God. It's a sin. It's against your mom and dad's rules. It's things like that. You're going to say no. The pressures of what your friends are going to trick you to do that's bad, you're going to say no. Because you know why? You know who you are. You are a child of God because of Jesus saving you. And in that, that makes you a, a princess or a prince underneath the king, Jesus. That means you have purpose. You have a higher calling. There's something for you to do. And then that, you're not going to mess that up by doing something stupid that one of your friends trying to persuade you. Come on, man, take a cigarette. Come on, take a smoke of this joint. Come on, take it. Here, this pill. Here, here, have a drink of this beer. It's okay. Tastes like Kool-Aid. They lying to you, and they're trying to trick you. Expect it. Endure it. Get ready. We are Christ followers. We are going to be persecuted. And that's okay. We're on a mission. We have got a calling. We are living for something higher than the lower things of this world. It's for you to understand you have a purpose. You're not a low life. You are somebody. You have a purpose. Next is embrace it here's where i get this the next scripture i'm going to read it's it's about this this letter that peter writes to to these these uh these christians here's what's going on in the christians lives where they were living the Roman Empire, the, or the people that were coming in at that time, they were coming after Christians. And they would find out if you're a Christian, this is what they would do to you. They would put you in a prison, okay? And you would stay there until they had enough of you. And then what they do is they would have a big party. And it would be like going to A.L. Brown football stadium. They had a big old stadium, and it's called a Coliseum. And everybody would get in there, and they would be all having a great time and drinking and partying and having popcorn and what like that. And then they would take all those Christians, and they would put them out there in the center. And then they would let lions loose from their cage into the, the center of the Colosseums, and the lions would eat the Christians until they were all gone, and the people had a party over it. And Peter was fixing to write these guys and said, I know what's coming your way. Here's what he said. First Peter. Chapter four. Says, dear friends. Do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that has come on you to test you as though something strange were happening to you, but Rejoice in as much as you participate in the suffering of Christ. However, if you suffer as, as a Christian, do not be ashamed, but praise God that you bear the name. You know what he's saying? He's saying, if you're being attacked and you're being persecuted, you're being beat up, you're getting put in prison, you're going to jail for being a Christian and following Jesus Christ, he's saying rejoice, sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah. I'm following Jesus and I'm going to die for Jesus. That's what he's saying. If you can get that in your heart and in your mind right now, it's going to make a biggest difference because you know why? Because Peter, he died on a cross. But you know what he said on the cross? He said, I'm not going to die like Jesus died. Don't hang me on the cross like that. Turn my cross upside down and go ahead and kill me. And that's what they did. They turned the cross. They put it upside down. They put him upside down. And they, and they stuck nails in his hands and feet just like they did Jesus. And, and they killed him.
Because he wanted to tell you. God loves you. Jesus loves you so much. And it's worth your life to follow them to go to heaven. Heaven must be so awesome to go there that even if you get killed for it, it's even better that they're saying, do it, do it, do it, do it. If they say they're going to shoot you, tell them to pull the trigger. I'm going to heaven to see Jesus. I'm going to heaven to see Jesus. Pull the trigger. They got a knife to your, to, to your throat. He's saying, just, to, you know, I'm going to see Jesus. I'm going to see Jesus. Peter is saying, rejoice. Hallelujah, hallelujah, let's do this thing. Rejoice. You don't hear this in churches all over the world. At least not here in America. But I'm telling you, God's word is being really just being strong because this shooting that happened down here, this is saying, are we ready as followers of Jesus Christ? Are you ready to go to school and read your Bible and people to smack you in the back of the head because you're reading your Bible at school? Are you, are you really going to get it? You know, it was really awesome to, to go to Walgreens and end up in a conversation about, you know, God with the cashier and she's just praising the Lord and wonderful for thanking God for second chances and third chances all because my stinking credit card wouldn't be taken. It's just rejecting it, rejecting it. It's like, thank the Lord for second chances. And next thing you know, it's like, woo, we're going to have a shouting time at Walgreens. But it's not always going to be like that. If you mention Jesus, somebody might get really mad at you. But how, how do we prepare our kids for this kind of stuff? I think the truth I think tell them the truth. You know, I recall, <coughs> I recall a story back when, uh, when it was kind of came around about how even people in church are mean and how they do things in such a way that is not Christian-like. Because here's how it, it went. And one of our daughters just kind of came across and this, and it really messed her up. See, every year... At this church, they had this little thing for Mother's Day. And the, and the youngest mother and the oldest mother and the mother with the most kids that had their children there in church got a, a nice little prize. You know, bags of candy or flowers or something. or always something different. You know? Well, you know, because at the time, you know, these kids, we had seven kids and seven kids called Sissy Mommy and she was Mommy. And people were like, you know, your mom, seven kids, stand up. Well, when they started bringing the numbers down, Sissy won. She got the word for most kids there present. And she deserved it. I, she deserved it. A few days later, got a letter in the mail. Somebody in the church did not like Sissy getting that award. And really put a... a, a a verbal abuse of hurt and, bad, and just, just wording that was really hurtful against Sissy as being mom over these children. Well, one of the girls, they overheard this and they did not like it. When I got home from work, she was all over me. You got to do something about this, Daddy. I'm just like, well, what do you want me to do? I'm looking at this letter and what do you see? She goes, well, they said this and said this. No, no, no. Look at the letter. Look at the very bottom. What do you see? Nobody signed it. We need to go tell the preacher. Well, let's go tell the preacher then. And we went and told the preacher, and the preacher really kind of interesting way of putting it to her this way was, you know what? If they didn't put their name on it, on the bottom of it, then they ain't worth nothing anyways. So I wouldn't take their word for a hilt. Your mama's doing a good job. You should take that, and you should take what that lady's saying and throw it in the trash. I was like, yeah, he did not too bad. Just because God's calling on our life was to be foster parents doesn't mean it was for you to be foster parents. You know, some people just ain't made for that. They just ain't got it. And some of you, you guys, don't do it. Don't, don't do it. Don't do it. But your calling may be something different, and you may be persecuted for what you're going to do. 
You may have to go through some troubles in life. You may have to go through some things in life. I'm just telling you. It's how do we prepare our children? Our prepare, you know, you can probably set up some control little incidences in your home, especially for little ones. You know, but for me right now, let's just tell you the truth. You're going to stand up for God. You're going to do things for God because God's putting it on your heart. You need to do some certain things. I'm telling you. People are going to make fun of you for it. But what matters? What matters in your life? What God thinks about you? Or what little Jimmy thinks about you? Or Allison? Or whatever his or her name? Well, you don't know. I'm in a relationship with them. And I'm not like, you know, mm, what's more important to you? God or this person? Because if you start saying their name a little more than God, now you just made another God over that God. And God don't like idols. Everywhere I read in the book, God goes in and destroys idols. And I don't know about you, destroy can mean somebody dies. And that's not good because that doesn't mean that that might bring a chance for them to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And I would, if I were, if I were you, I want every chance in the world for, uh, for that person to get saved. I wouldn't want to get in the way. Jesus was trying to say this. So we're getting ready to close. Blessed are the meek. Blessed are the humble. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. Blessed are the pure in heart. Blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sakes. For theirs is the kingdom of God. You want heaven? You want to be a, 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 the God just to, to really mean importance to you because what Jesus did for you was amazing? then you need to follow his words. You need to look up what the words are. Humble, what does humble mean? What, what do I got to do to be humble? What, what is hunger and thirst after God? That means you just got to, every. he's like on your brain all the time. You're so in love with him. He's on your brain and you're thinking about him all the time. You're thinking about what would God think? What would Jesus do? How would this happen? You know, you know you're talking about him all the time. Blessed are the pure in heart. You're thinking of things that I'm going to clean up and I'm not going to do towards God. And I'm going to clean up some things in my I'm, way I'm acting. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get pure. I'm going to do things his way. I'm going to bust it out of the peacemakers. Well, you know, hey, when somebody starts a fight, you're, you're trying to break it up. You know, you're trying to bring peace. Or you're not going to start. When somebody's trying to start trouble with you, you're not going to go back and engage in it. Oh, that's a big one. Woo hoo hoo. We can see that on Facebook all the time, man. They always on that. Well, blah, blah, blah. They blank, blank, blank. Bleep, bleep, bleep on that person. But blessed are the peacemakers. You are a follower of Jesus Christ. If you are a Christ-centered family, then you're going to look at these words different. You're going to behave different, and you're going to get called out on it. But you know what? Don't worry when you're persecuted. Maybe worry if you're not. I think this is one of those cases when bad things happen to people. Sometimes if you're doing everything right, you're going to have bad things come at you. So it would endure for you to ask this question. Are the bad things happening to me because I'm following Christ? I'm trying to do it right. Or are the bad things happening to me because I'm not following Christ? Blessed are the persecuted. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. If you bow your heads as we close. As we get ready to pray, I just want to ask you, you know, first, it's, it's always the first thing in, in my heart is that do you know Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior? Maybe you've asked him, you know, to save you, but you kind of got to wander away from him. But that's a, just a, those are two different subjects right there, two different things. One is if you died right now, you don't know Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. You didn't ask him to save you. You're not going to go to heaven. This is the day that you got to make that choice. And for those that say, well, you know what, I, I, I did ask Jesus to save me, but I've done some things and maybe that he's not happy with, I've sinned against him. You know what, then this is the point of saying, just Jesus, forgive me and set me straight and help me not to do it again. But 
But it's also to say, you know what, God, help me pray to help me prepare my heart to follow you, that people are going to do things against me, to be the right person, to act the right way when they do bad things against me. Help me, help me, help me act right when they're doing bad towards me. Help me not cuss them out. Help me not punch them in the face. Help me not hurt, hurt them back. Help me not be that. Help me be what Jesus would be if, he, if it was him. So as we pray, will you ask God for the direction that you need, especially for Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. We thank you for the opportunity of this word. We stand in the words of Isaiah that this word will go forth and it will accomplish the things where and to it is sent. That you will move in a mighty way through this word to prepare our hearts for the future of our lives, our families' lives in this country. God, that we will bring honor and glory to you and lift the name of Jesus. And that we will, you will help us prepare for that to make a stand. And God, and it will bring honor and glory and lift up the name of Jesus. But Father, first and foremost, if there's one, anyone here or watching online, Father, we just pray and ask for their salvation, God. And if they don't know you as Lord and Savior and they want to get saved right now, help them pray this prayer saying, Heavenly Father, I am a sinner. I need a Savior. Jesus, save me. Forgive me of my sin. Make me brand new. Fill me with your spirit so I can live for you. My life is not my own. It is yours. Take it. Make it new. Make it count completely for you. I surrender my life to the name and to the glory of, the, of your son, Jesus Christ. And in his name. Thank you for saving me. And for the rest of us, Lord, we just pray, and God, that you'll continue to, to uh, Holy Spirit, to bring conviction to our hearts, again, to prepare us for our purpose and our direction. God, that you will continue to input the things that we need to, to, to fulfill our purpose in our lives, to further the kingdom, and to be a part of the family. God, help us, help us have a, a Christ-centered home in our in our families and help us if we're going directions or thinking wrong father change our thinking get us in the right direction god we just ask your help with that and bless these families in the name of jesus i ask you amen amen and amen